In this video, we're going to start the Simplifying Square Roots worksheet under the Infinite Geometry tab on the CUDA software website. I'll leave a link in the description below so you know how to access that worksheet, and it's within the Review of Algebra section. So our directions are to simplify, and we know that we're simplifying square roots. However, there's an easy trick to simplifying square roots. What you want to do is, let's use an arbitrary number, let's just call it a. So let's say we have the square root of a, and this is what we're simplifying. What we need to do is find a multiple of that number a that is a perfect square. So if we find a perfect square that is a multiple of a, we can break that up into two more numbers. So let's say that a equals, here's the multiple, that's the perfect square, and then some other number, let's just say y. So a is equal to x squared times y. So underneath the square root, as opposed to having that arbitrary number a, we'll have x squared times y. Now, it may still seem confusing because it looks like, as opposed to simplifying, we just made this a lot more work. But if you remember, the square root of any number squared is just itself. The square root cancels out that exponent of two we would be able to rewrite this as the square root of x squared times the square root of y, and then you can see that square root can cancel out the squared, so we would have x times the square root of y. And you repeat this process over and over again until this square root of y, there is no longer a perfect square that is a multiple of the number within the square root. Now this still may seem a little confusing since we're thinking only in terms of variables, but let's apply this to number one. Before I do that, let me quickly write out a couple perfect squares. There's two squared, which is equal to four. There's three squared, which equals nine. Four squared, which equals 16. Five squared is 25. And six squared is 36. Now I know for a fact that 16 is a multiple of 96. 16 goes into 96 six times. So let's rewrite number one as the square root of 16 times six, because 16 times six is 96. And if you wanna double check that, feel free to use a calculator. So 16 times six is 96, but we can rewrite that 16 as 4 squared. So as opposed to having the square root of 16 times 6, we'll have the square root of 4 squared times 6. Then we can break that square root up into two separate square roots. We can do the square root of 4 squared times the square root of 6. And remember, the square root cancels out the squared because the square root of a number squared is just that number. So then we'll have four times the square root of six as the answer in number one. Let's move on to number two. In number two, we're given the square root of 216. We wanna break this up into a perfect square times some other number. So let's see what goes into 216 evenly. Let's start with four. Four does indeed go into 216 evenly. 4 goes into 216 54 times, so we can rewrite this as the square root of 4 times 54. Now 4 is our perfect square, which is 2 squared. 2 squared equals 4. So we can say the square root of 2 squared times 54. And then we can break this up into the square root of 2 squared times the square root of 54 which equals two times the square root of 54. However, we're not done yet because that 54 is not the simplest square root it can be because there's another perfect square that can go into 54. Let's see what it is on a calculator. 54 cannot be divided by four, so that perfect square isn't going to be two squared. Let's try 54 divided by nine. That gives us six, so we can rewrite this moving it up to here as two times the square root of nine times six. 
and nine was the perfect square being three squared. So we can say two times the square root of three squared times six, which we can break up to be two times the square root of three squared times the square root of six. And remember, the square root will cancel out that exponent of two, so we'll have two times three, the whole number three, times the square root of six, and two times three is equal to six. Then we have times the square root of six. And there is no perfect square that can go into this number six, so six times the square root of six is our final answer. Let's move on to number three. In number three, we have the square root of 98. 98 divided by four gives us a number with a decimal. 98 divided by three squared, which is nine, gives us a number with a decimal. 98 divided by four squared, which is 16, gives us a number with a decimal. If we try dividing 98 by five squared, which is 25, that also gives us a number with a decimal, and so does dividing it by 36, which is six squared. Let's try 98 divided by seven squared, which is 49. 49 times two equals 98. So a lot of times this is going to be plugging numbers into your calculator until you find a perfect square that is a multiple of that number. So in this case, 49 times two equals 98, and that 49 can be rewritten as seven squared times two. We can break up this square root into the square root of seven squared times the square root of two, and the square root of seven squared is seven, and then we're left with multiplying that by the square root of two. There's no perfect square that can go into two, so seven times the square root of two is the answer in number three. Let's move on to number four. This one should be easy enough to do without a calculator. Four doesn't go into 18 evenly, but nine does, and we know that nine is three squared. So the square root of 18, we can rewrite as the square root of nine times two. Nine, we can rewrite as the square root of three squared, and then we still have times two, and let's break that up. The square root of three squared times the square root of two, so we'll have three times the square root of two. And there's no perfect square that can go into two evenly, therefore three times the square root of two is our solution. Number five, let's think about what can go into 72. Four goes into 72 evenly. So we can rewrite 72 as the square root of four times 18. And that four is, a per is our perfect square, so that's two squared times 18, which we can say is two times the square root of 18. However, I know that there's a perfect square that can go into that 18. We just did that in number four. 18 can be simplified as three times the square root of two. And that's because 18 could be rewritten as nine times two, where nine was the perfect square, which was three squared, and that's how we got three times the square root of two. So now we have two times three times the square root of two. Two times three is six, so our final answer is six times the square root of two. And if you wanna work out the square root of 18 again and simplify it for practice, please feel free to do so. Let's move on to number six. Lucky enough for us, in number six, 144 is already a perfect square. 144 is equal to 12 squared. So we can say the square root of 12 squared, which we know is 12. So the simplified version of the square root of 144 is 12. Continuing on to number seven, we have the square root of 45. Four does not go into 45 evenly, but nine does. 45 can be rewritten as nine times five. So the square root of 45 can be rewritten as a square root of nine times five. Nine can be rewritten as three squared, and we still have to multiply that by five to get to 45. So the square root of 45 now can be written as a square root of three squared times five, which we can break up that square root and then simplify. So we'll get three times the square root of five 
as our answer in number seven. Now let's go over number eight. And number eight, we have the square root of 175. I know mentally that 25 goes into 175 evenly, and 25 is five squared. So we can rewrite this 175 as 25 times, and that's going to be seven times. 25 times seven equals 175, so the square root of 175 equals the square root of 25 times seven. That 25 is the perfect square, which is five squared, and then we still are multiplying that to seven. Breaking this up, we'll have the square root of five squared times the square root of seven, which will be five times the square root of seven. So five times the square root of seven is the answer in number eight. And I'm gonna go ahead and stop the video here, but please remember to give me a thumbs up on this video and continue on to the next one where we'll do more practice problems because familiarity is key. The more familiar you are with square roots and perfect squares, the easier it is to simplify. And the takeaway from this video is that in order to simplify a square root, you need to find a perfect square that is a multiple of the number within that radical.